Hello everyone, this is Yuri Godard and this is your daily devotional. And today I want to invite you to go through the theme, it is okay to not be okay. I want to read from Matthew chapter 11 from verses 7 to 11 that says, As these men were going away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Those who wear soft clothing are in king's palaces. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and one who is more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has not arisen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet, the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is what was happening. John had been imprisoned from um, speaking to Herods that it was not okay for him to be with his, the wife of his brother. John was put in prison and in prison he perhaps started seeing what was coming, that there would be no way for him. So he asks his disciples, John's disciples, to go to Jesus and ask Jesus if he was the one or should you wait for someone else. In fact, the work of John's life was being put to check at that moment. In his mind, he was, because of the circumstances, confused if he had lived a life worth of that everything that he believes in actually had an impact in the world. And I think this is a feeling that many of us go through. Many of us go through these moments in life where we're not sure of what we're doing is really working. We're not sure that what we're doing is really having an impact or making a difference. We're not even sure sometimes that, you know, all the sacrifices that we might even have made in regards to following the Lord faithfully are worth it. We, perhaps you're sitting there, perhaps you're thinking about your work, your secular work, thinking, man, I'm killing myself out there and I'm not even making enough Or um, if you are retired, I'm not sure if what I did my entire life was worth of it. Or if you have kids, you might be wondering, are my kids going to follow the Lord? Or even, why are they not following the Lord? And you are putting your faith and what perhaps one day you stood upon in check. Doubting yourself. Doubting your strength, doubting your worth, doubting your impact. And that was exactly where John was at. John was a very humble man. Because when he saw Christ increasing, he said, Guys, don't worry. He has to increase and I have to diminish. He was a very obedient man. Because... His entire life was dedicated to following what the Lord had asked him. He was a man that had surrendered his life completely and served the Father despite the difficulties. Even in the face of death, he was courageous and never gave up. His moral principles and bravery were outstanding. But... In the end, he started doubting himself since he was only human. He went to his disciples to inquire, is there someone else to come? 
go and ask Jesus. And I just just was also want to to note that John, when he was in 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 his mother's womb, he was filled with the Spirit when his mother Elizabeth came to visit Mary. John was the first person outside of Jesus' family that knew for sure, that had received the revelation from heaven that Jesus was the Christ. He knew Jesus was the Christ. He was responsible and dedicated his life for preparing the way for Jesus. He had highlighted and preached to everyone that Jesus was the Lamb of God who atoned for the world's sins. Jesus attested of him that in the kingdom he was the greatest son of a woman. He was a trailblazer. He was chosen to go before Jesus and pave the way for the Lord. And when John's disciples arrived, they asked, are you, John is asking, are you the one to come? Hmm. Or should he wait for someone else? And Jesus looked around him and he saw people that were desperate, people that were suffering, people that were lost as sheep without a shepherd. And Jesus started calling them. Jesus started calling right in front of John's disciples. Jesus didn't, Jesus didn't speak. He showed the power of God right in front of them so that he could testify to John what they had seen. He called the lame and the lame walked. He called the blind and the blind saw. He called the deaf and the deaf heard. <laughs> Even the dead were being resurrected with the power of God and people were glorifying God. To the poor, the gospel was being preached to those who didn't need, didn't have the means. Jesus was there. Hmm. When Jesus was approached, he didn't criticize. He didn't say men of little faith, but he encouraged. And this serves as an example for everyone who served the Lord. The lesson we we learn is that it is acceptable to have doubts, to be fearful, to be weak, to sometimes be lost, to fail and to cry. We fail, don't we? We are not and will never be above the perceived flaws that continuously surround us. This chapter teaches us how that it is okay to have doubts. After all, God told nearly everyone who had a personal relationship with Him to not be afraid. After all, even Jesus wept and was exceedingly lonely and sad at times. And that was Him experiencing what every single human being goes through. Obviously, he did without sin. Doubts and worries and feelings of loneliness, sorrow, despair, and even losing the sight of the vision God has given us are things we all go through in our journey. John was in that place. He, he had lost the sight of the greatest picture that God had shown him that his life was on earth just as a small person but to make an impact and to serve the Lord and that the seeds that the Lord had planted in his heart to sow would not be in vain. 1 Corinthians 15 58 says in my own words Work, continue doing, because your work in the Lord is not in vain. God will not be angry with us for feeling weak, because He wasn't angry with Abraham. He wasn't angry with Moses. He wasn't angry with David. He wasn't angry with Elijah. In fact, when Elijah hid in a, in a cave, 
God came and said, what are you doing here? And Elijah went on speaking about all the things that he was fearing, that he was happening. And God is saying, was saying basically to him, I'm above this. You lost the sight of the greatest vision I gave to your life. But here is the vision again, and he renewed Elijah. So when we come to him, he's not in, a, in any way criticizing us for feeling weak, but he's in the business of strengthening us. What is not appropriate is to try to deal with all these concerns on our own. God has a remedy for every problem. He has a word for every single emotion. And He has escape for every weakness. He also asks us to come to Him with our flaws and fears and sorrows and tears and deficiencies. And we have so many of them, don't we? So that He will pour out His love and strengthen us. And this seems to be the main theme of Matthew 11, because at the end of the chapter, Jesus turns to everyone and invites everyone to partake in the same medicine that he had provided to John. When John's disciples saw all the miracles, they walked away and they said, listen, Jesus didn't say a word to us, but what we saw, I can testify to you. That He is the Christ, the Son of God. He is the one whom your life was given to you, and it wasn't in vain. And today, through the Holy Spirit, I can say the same thing to you. Your work for the Lord is not in vain. You, in the place of weakness, stand up because the Lord is strengthening you and he's saying come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light and this is for you for me and for anyone that approaches him my prayer today is that you don't let sin, grief, hopelessness, or despair hinder you from experience, experiencing God's abundant grace. He is who He is. He's Emmanuel. He's God with us. Come to Him. You who are suffering and He will give you rest. Come to Him. You who are doubting and He will give you certainty. Come to Him, you who are crying, and He will comfort you. Come to Him. Come to Him. Come to Him, because He is with us. And I want to end today with um, what it says in Isaiah 57, verse 14 and 15, in my own words, that say, Can a mom forget her son, who she is breastfeeding? Even if she forgets, I will not forget you, says the Lord. See, your walls and your troubles and your difficulties are in the palm of my hands. He who knows us is also able to care for us. And I pray that you will be comforted with the presence of God in this very moment. That he will give you assurance to continue and strength to overcome, and peace to know that everything that you do is for His glory, and He will fulfill what He had intended when He first sent you. Many blessings.